everybody. Welcome to Virtual Vines. TC just got here. TC Frazier for Tryon. He's going to be joining me on the show. Uh, and today, it's it's just it's just screw it, screw yeah. it, right? TC I had to just say hello to, them, to our, our other co-host, the real the real star of the show. The real Koa. Koa, Koa, really the real star <laughs> of the show, the dog. Uh, yeah, we have a fun show in store. We know what we're not going to need tonight. We're we're we're, we're not going to need this guy. Yeah. Well, no no wine aerobics. Uh, well, you know, and and when I was <clears throat> talking about different things to do, uh, themes, uh, you know, there was a wine bar many years ago. Um, I think it might have been in Boone, where on Monday or Tuesday, just to drum up business, they had this thing called I think it was called Screw Tuesdays, maybe. And uh, if you brought a, a corkscrew, um, they basically gave you like a free glass of wine or a tasting of the flight or whatever else. And ultimately, they built a wall of corkscrews and people signed it and stuff <laughs> like that. So. Well, uh, yeah, so none of these tonight. Yep. Uh, so the show is all going to be stuff that you can have in the backyard. You don't have to worry about having a corkscrew. Stelvin Society. Stelvin Society tonight. This is the folks that want to be a member of our Stelvin Society. A uh, couple things to talk about really, really, really quick. Uh, this Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, this Thursday night, uh, between six and eight o'clock, we're going to be doing a tasting with uh, Paris Valley Road Vineyard uh, out of Paso. Um, it's uh, five dollars for wine club, ten for non wine club members. I have like fourteen spots left, so if you haven't done that yet uh, and you want to join us, hop on that tonight. Add that into your cart. Yeah, a lot of great wines uh, from Paso. You know, we love wines. Everly. Actually, we're doing Day Out, which is Paso Rebels tonight. Yes. Um, you know, so a lot of great yes. stuff going on in the Central Coast area. So love it, love it, love it. So it's a fun little wine. We'll have uh, some five five wines from them, and and Steve Hedberg actually represents. So good, Steve. So in my mind when the, while Steve's there. Uh, also, um, to talk about uh, May sixteenth, May sixteenth, we're doing a uh, wine and cheesecake pairing. Wine cheesecake pairing. So that's another event that's up on our website that you can uh, you can sign up for. So uh, hop on uh, on the site, add those tickets. Uh, I believe that was eighteen for non-members and fifteen for members. So it'd be three uh, wines paired with three uh, cheesecakes. So okay. a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But now let's get into the show. We're we're here. Van is here too. Van of Vines is here, just off camera. I promise people I would be on this. Yes, you're here because we know how much you love Stelvin. <laughs> That's makes really, it, it makes it easy, and, and, and honestly, I think this is a bag. Uh, this is this is a pick for Vanna bag tonight. I think right. not just because of the screw cap, but I think these are some it tried and true favies uh, from from the black in the past from Vanna's yeah. personal collections. I think. So. Yes, yes, there are a few, and uh, Alita Robbins uh, is happy that we're live. I know. Uh, Voiced opinion doesn't doesn't they don't like the 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 pre records the, the pre yep. don't yeah. like the pre records. Yeah. We are live tonight, <laughs> so go ahead and, and uh, in the chats uh, right now, go down there and uh, I'm gonna pull this up right. Tell us what you're drinking tonight. What are you drinking? Put it in the comments. Let us know. We want to know because uh, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna start off with, and that is a little peach cool panette. This might be a familiar uh, wine here. For our friends uh, that are veterans of virtual vines, um, this one actually very, very popular um, uh, early, early this time last year. Mm -hmm. So this is the perfect time to start drinking these peak pool panettes because um, they're just light and crisp and delicious. And guess what? Has a Stelvin enclosure. It's going to be so easy to just open it up. Let me show you that bottle one more time. So you can see it because everybody's gonna go. Oh yeah, the one with the fishies on it. Yeah, the ocean, the ocean embroidered on the top, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of signify yep, their proximity the, yeah. to the to the to the sea and things like that. And and one thing I will say, just speaking of fish, uh, one thing that Peak Pool and especially this one does because it's from an area that's very high in limestone, which kind of heightens the characteristics of the grape. Mm -hmm. One thing that Peak Pool does as a natural uh, thing to a, as a grape, it actually breaks down uh, um, mm. salinity and iodine. So when mm. you think about any kind of not only seafood, but higher saltier dishes or, you know, I mean, I know it's kind of cliche, but I mean, you know, like we said you know, before, like ceviches or, or, you know, high acid kind of uh, dishes, just goes very, very well with it. Uh, people across the board and, you know, kind of warms my heart that people um, aren't just, you know, I'm kind of, Hey, try this, try this. I mean, I know pick pool is not the most uh, well known great, but I think uh, compared to four or five years ago, I'm actually getting wine bar owners, wine shop owners, uh, 
uh, you know, beverage managers going, Hey man, what kind of interesting whites do you have? Like a peak pool. And I'm like, like a peak pool, you know, <laughs> and it's so funny, like, you know, because not only do they know the quality to price ratio is there, but the value is unbelievable. And what I love about it is, you know, as Danny said, it just has this beautiful kind of light, kind of crisp flavor to it. Uh, high acidity, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, uh, peak pool in English translates to the lip stinger. Uh, I promise it won't sting the lips, just kind of <laughs> tickle the, just tickle a little bit to kind of make you go back for another sip. Uh, but that's what, that's what I love about this wine. I mean, if it, if it came in a can, that's the only thing I could think that would be better for this wine, uh, peak pool in the can, which we might be on Ooh. something right there. Peak pool in the can. Yeah. Mm. I know what we're on to right now, and that is an amazing deal price uh, tonight for this wine. Uh, we have it uh, on the shelf normally at 14 down to $12 plus your club discounts. No. If you're in the uh, Loaded Grape Wine Club, yummy, yummy, yummy. Uh, you, for most uh, well, it's meant folks, to be uh, it's meant to be consumed young. That's why they put it in a Stelvin and capture because, you know, not to say anyone out there listening needs to, an extra reasoning to, to age wine or anything like that. Um, but what's great about it is, you know, Peak Pool, when you think about where it's from in the south of France and the Languedoc, you know, not only is the Languedoc, which we've done a show based on that yeah. area before, uh, being, you know, really the oldest wine growing region in all of France, but in terms of the oldest grapes that have consistently been grown there, um, since so being one of them, but Peak Pool obviously uh, is one of them as well. Peak Pool mm -hmm. makes a, a, a noir, but uh, Peak Pool Blanc is uh, the predominant. I mean, it does go a little bit, say, in California or some somewhere in the ether. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Probably there's probably some vineyard. You got to travel more vineyards, North Carolina. It's probably somebody, hey, try this Peak Pool from Yakin Valley. And you're like, oh, okay, that's fun. <laughs> I've not had a Peak Pool from Yakin Valley. That, they, no. That's probably out there. I mean, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the Wild West and you can do it. But there's some Bruder Bent Liners, yeah, but not, uh, you know, probably some Miller Turgals. I mean, you're yeah. getting, some, getting, some, getting some interesting yeah. ones out. Yeah, there. yeah, but not uh, yeah. peak pool. But, but this... it has a lot of synonyms of uh, uh, Foolish Blanc, which uh, they actually make cognac out of it north of Bordeaux. So it actually has about three different synonyms in France. But uh, in Penay, which is in that south of France in Languedoc, as we mentioned, is kind of the preeminent area. So you're always going to see, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if it's from Penay, this kind of coat of arms on the bottle. Oh, and it's very, bottle yeah. Well, and yeah, well, not only the Foolish, and of course, this one's, I think, and, and of course, take with a grain of salt because I sell this one. I think the label's. Probably one of the best in the market for pig pool, yeah. but you're also going to see this interesting on um, 1970s shampoo bottle label mm -hmm. on the on the bottom, and and that's kind of um, uh, it's actually regulated by the AOC. Mm -hmm. If you're going to put pig pool de Pinay, you actually have to have those uh, couple things there. So, but not not the, the fishies are optional, and that's what these guys do. It's just that oh. extra little bit. But this is actually made by Vinerons there that are in the uh, travel and tourism industry there that really kind of try to, you know, hone in uh, to bring people not only there to travel, but obviously drink their wine. And uh, I got to tell you what, we make wine like this for prices like this. I'm not saying I'll buy a bottle or two. I'm saying, give me a case. You know, yeah, it costs for $12 a bottle. Yeah, <laughs> you know, forget, is, forget about it. This is mermaid wine. It has everything for me. Mm -hmm. like all of it. The fishies. The fishies. Like, oh, well, and, and for those of you out there that love oysters, I mean, you know, this is something mm -hmm. I'm thinking with oysters, um, but, you know, uh, mussels, but maybe scallops. You know, I know scallops, depending on, you know, what you can get your hands on, but a nice big U10 scallop, mm -hmm. like just steer it with some, like, you know, just like a little risotto, you know, risotto top. You're, you're in heaven right there. I'm, I'm, you know? I'm just keep on, keep <laughs> just on keep talking on, about. Just keep on uh, talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. yeah. yeah well, and, and again, you know, what, what I love about Pig Pool is not only is it fantastic, you feel like you, you're living, even though you may be outside uh, in a bathing suit drinking out of a, a paper cup, when you drink this wine, you're going to actually feel like you're sitting in like the Ritz Carlton drinking like a high end, you know, uh, you know, Northern Italian or Burgundy or something like that. Because you're like, wait a minute, that wine's only how much? Even in restaurants, they're only like 30, 40 bucks, which, you know, is, is even for that is still. But for $12 tonight, guys, if you're not buying four, five, six bottles, have a yeah. new job. Do you have it because it is a porch pounder. It is a porch pounder. Hey, you're, my shirt on nobody yes. can see it. Nobody can see it. Oh, we all have know. our shirts on. I think that's yeah, we all have, have we all have different shirts on. I have the I have the new Eddie Bauer uh, fishing shirts that are now available in the shop. I guess I should take this down. Uh, are now in the shop. Uh, we got three different colors: blue, white, and olive. TC's got his virtual vine shirt on, and has got a porch pounding t-shirt on. So, uh, yeah, lots of lots and we of. Didn't even plan that. Did not even plan it. The, the load of great flamethrowers coming up next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the kids love that one. Kids love, it. kids love it. Let's see. Let's see what everybody's drinking tonight. Let's go over here, Catherine. No wine tonight. Uh, Bull City Cider. Ooh. 
Okay. And she said the last of the Matador. That's Matador. We've got to get over there. We've got to get over there. Yeah, we need to go check that out. Uh, uh, Kevin Smith is having some cane. Ooh. Yeah. We need, to be at, we need to be at his house, too. Man, always, that is yeah. Fun. Uh, we yeah, have over here, hey, Van of in the house. I'm drinking Twin Island Sauvignon Blanc with a Stelvin cap. Yes. See, 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 yeah, see. somebody's right there. Somebody's, yes. somebody, somebody read ahead a little bit in the chapter and did their homework and, and came prepared right there. Yeah, so. they did. And also, that's still on special uh, for a couple, for another day. So uh, that's that's down to $12 as well. So Twin Islands, yeah, yeah. yeah Twin Islands. So if you haven't, uh, haven't gotten your hands on that, grab that, throw that in your cart as well tonight. Uh, Scott is sharing some awesome blend from yesterday, 55% Grenache. Oh, yeah, because, Scott, you uh, must have done our blending class uh, that we did yesterday in the shop. So thank you for participating in that. So we did 55% Grenache, 20% Merlot, 25% Cabernet. Uh, then add a little Cab Franc, because had that at his house. Uh, and that sounds absolutely amazing. Michelle, Michelle, uh, oh, you want to see the bottle? But she does love the peak pool. So here's, I'm, I'm going to show you the bottle in a second. We'll do that. Uh, and it looks like uh, Christy's having the Rahm Power Sauvignon. Which is technically is Stelvin, because that's Stelvin. the only. And the funny thing about that is, and maybe we need to, to, to revisit uh, not just Rahm Power, but maybe higher, because I know you guys have some Cade fans out yeah. there. Spotswood, um, Hourglass, uh, Cliff Lady. So uh, Rumbauer, you know, not only being one of the first wines for them in, in 40 years, but it's the very first wine uh, that they do in Stelvin. As my, I think they're trying to do the small bottles like the Chardonnay in Stelvin, but it's the only 750 they do in Stelvin as well. So, hey, again, Christy, kudos mm -hmm. for going not only Stelvin, but like a step up, man. I mean, that's like a little, little extra. Oh, little, 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 little high, high life. High can't life do, we can't do that for $12. That's but, hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, and then the uh, uh, Brunel from yeah, our Spanish dinner that we just had. Uh, that's what Michelle said. Wasn't that a good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I feel is. like Cava just got people relaxed. And then people are kind of going, okay, what's next? A white wine. And when you go around, people are like, oh, my God, I was just going to just drink this and wait for this Tiffany and Garnacha. And almost everybody at the dinner was just like ooh and on about that. Yeah, that Verdejo drink. So, so, so nice. Well, uh, and uh, what, what, uh, Kevin here, I had a little kind of uh, – Drank the last bottle the other night. See, obviously it was um, uh, fortuitous that uh, you drank it because it's now on special. You can get some more of it. Uh, great deal. 14 down to 12. Um, and let me show that label one more time for Michelle. There it is, the Peak Pupinette. Um, so Same great label, new yep. vintage guys. We just got it in the shop. I had it out, and it was like you it's, know, you know it's we have drinking coming great. Up. It's drinking it really great. Um, great. Just got a nice uh, inventory of it. So again, you guys go crazy with it, like you did with the last vintage. Uh, apologies that we were out for a little bit, but again, this is something that um, hey, you know, we're we're getting all the fresh vintages in. Um, fresh pricing, fresh vintages, fresh yep. year. Yeah. Yeah. Who dis? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who dis? Uh, wine club members use your coupon seller if you're in the seller club, state in the state club, or reserve in the reserve club or grand reserve. You use both that. Uh, go over to the website, throw a couple in your in the uh, in the good old cart, and we're gonna move on to. I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, one of my fave uh, is, is this rosé right here. Uh, speaking of Grenache, um, this is this is one right here that uh, folks are really, really going to love. Uh, and that is the Day Owl. If you remember, last time we did this, uh, again, funny, we're, 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 we're hitting a couple of things uh, that you've seen in Virtual Vines. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit some stuff that you haven't seen in Virtual sure. Vines. But this one, the last time we did it, we did it in camp. Yeah. So uh, we do still have that option in cans? Do we still uh, we have, we, uh, we yeah. have option in cans. So, we actually have the option in kegs. So for those of you that are very yeah. adventurous, want to get a keg of the you can. Yeah, we could do that. Um, so this is uh, Grenache-based uh, out of California. Oh, look at that color. It's yeah, this so is from our, pretty. from our good friends that make Harkin. They also make... Um, the uh, Exodus, I know you guys have oh, loved, yeah, love the Exodus. loved the Exodus wines. Um, you know, several other are just little gems and, and kind of winners. Um, Christina, who we talked to, to before, um, to possibly maybe get her on the show mm -hmm. because they just do so many. Uh, Intercept is another oh, one. Oh, the Intercept. They also yep. do the Intercept wine from, for uh, Charles Woodson. So, um, one thing I can say about uh, mm -hmm. O'Neill Imports or O'Neill. Winery and Vendor, I guess, is, is the full name, and not to say that means anything to you guys, but 
as big as they are, what they do is they curate brands and labels for chains, for restaurants, for celebrities, whatever it may be. So instead of making a big bulk production of one or two or 10 wines, they make a lot of different wines sourced from many different areas. So once that volume gets added up, by volume, they're a large winery, but they're not making large production wine, if that makes sense. So they're able to grow and do spirits, which as you probably know, you make a little bit more margin on spirits than you do wine. So the spirits program has allowed them to get bourbon barrels for the price they're able to get bourbon barrels for. And they're able to do Harkin, which is a barrel fermented Chardonnay for the price it is. Whereas most other truly from barrel fermented Chardonnays in California usually start about 25, 30 Easy. bucks and go up just because of the price point. So what that's allowed them to do is do all these different labels and get the price down very affordable, uh, very tried, true across the board wines, very drinkable wines. And so for me, O'Neill is like that classic, keep the light bills paid for us at try on when, you know, when somebody like Danny comes up to me and says, TC, I need a couple by the glass options that I'm going to put on the list. I'm not changing the list for six months. I need to make sure inventory is there. If I need six cases or six bottles, O'Neill is a company I go to time and time again, because the price points there, the quality is there, the consistency is there. And I got to tell you what folks from this side and that side of the business, mm -hmm. those three things are worth their weight in gold, yeah. especially yeah. now uh, after COVID getting supply chain issues rectified and things like that. These guys are just, just winners every single time. Yeah. And this is, this is a winner. I know, I think last time we were at, I think somewhere in that $22 for the four pack. Mm -hmm. um, so to get this uh, mm -hmm. sub 20 plus your discount, uh, fun, fun rosé. Mother's Day's coming up this Sunday and you're going to need a rosé. And I'm telling you right now, mom would love, love, love the day out. One is very pretty label too. The juice is so, so good. It's, they're kind of interesting, kind of Hawthorne, acacia kind mm -hmm. of a thing. I mean, certainly it's got that cranberry, pomegranate, all those indicative rosé things, but, but, it, but it's, it's, it almost has this kind of underlying kind of tangerine kind of Kent's kind, okay. of, thing. It kind, kind of just makes it, it almost is like this kind of gushy thing. I mean, you mm -hmm. want to take a sip, and it lingers, it kind of makes the mouth water a little bit, which I've talked about on the show before. That's acidity, folks. When we yeah. keep saying acidity, acidity, acid, 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 what the hell are they talking about? It should make the mouth water or take a bite of food or another sip. And when a wine's in perfect balance, you should be able to set it down and kind of go, another sip. Hey, babe, I want to open another bottle. You're having a glass with me. <laughs> those are the wines that's, that are talking to you. That are, that are talking to you. I know the alcohol is talking to you a little bit too, but, but still, but your palate's saying, I like that. I'd like more of that, please. You, know? <laughs> I, 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 you start off with Hawthorne? What's a, what a Hawthorne? Well, I mean, it's like, explain this to me. Well, I mean, it was more of a Northern Europe kind of a bush. I mean, I need, yeah, a, yeah, I need, yeah, a, I need yeah. a quarter with for TC yeah, yeah, over yeah. here. Hawthorne. Yeah, a little Hawthorne. I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm like, acacia, yeah. maybe acacia bush or something like that. It's a little small, like Northern Europe. Acacia bush. Yeah, they also call them May tree. They call May trees as well. Yeah, look at that. Man, them. you've Come been on, spending man. too much time down the blueberry patch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, like little, little baby well, I'm going to be looking up my hawthorns later uh, yeah. and my acacias. Um, yeah, no. So, hey, I love it. I, 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 you know what? I, 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 every week I sit here and I learn something else from TC. Uh, I well, that's know why we have TC all, back. I mean, you know, yeah. you, guys, you guys are like, yeah. we, I mean, you know, we can, we can yeah. have, you know, we can have several. You know, balding uh, guys that talk too much on the show. We could, but we got to have something back that we're going to learn a little bit and keep yeah. us entertained as well, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah. I'm like a stray cat. I mean, if you, you the, are, if you keep the tray out, I'll you keep are. I, I am going to be looking up my hawthorns and acacia bushes later. I mean, um, I didn't know. I mean, yes. Yeah. I'm Shout out to D. Lynn Proctor. I think he actually used Hoffman one time using, um, what was he talking about? I think maybe Albarino one time, as a matter of fact. So I think uh, many, many moons ago, looking that up and saw that out at a Whole Foods, I was like, what is a Hoffman? I never saw that. And there it was. And never forget it. Now you never forget. No, no, no. I'm like, I know the author Nathaniel Hawthorne, but I, that's about it. I don't know any other Hawthorns. But this is, folks, uh, let's get back to the rosé for a second. Absolutely delicious. Uh, it is such a good deal at under twenty dollars plus your club discounts. Uh, Vanna Vines, what are you thinking of the I rose? Love it. I agree with everything that TC said because it just has such a different flavor. Like you know, I'm a big rose drinker, mm -hmm. um, and this one just it like it kind of takes on a little adventure. It's so different mm -hmm. from what I normally drink, so I really like it. Some are a little thin. Some are almost metallic. That mm -hmm. I've tried. Some are kind of floral in the nose and fall flat. Some have almost no nose and, and almost are kind of sweet in the back end. To me, I think this has a perfect balance of, 
of of having you know a little bit of a you know aromatics without being like floral it doesn't like leap off the glass no. kind, of, kind of overpower and, and the flavor it lingers i mean yeah. it, typically you think of rosé as kind of just a here and wham bam thank you ma'am and it's gone this is something again i'm just I, you know, it's probably been a, a minute at least since I've taken a sip, and I'm still it matches my lingers shirt. on. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is great. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this is all. Yeah, this is yeah, all yeah, going to. This, this is going to be so. another porch pounder, <laughs> folks. Another one. Um, you know what? This is going to make you a. You know, if you go from the day owl, you could be a night owl after you drink a couple <laughs> of these too, because you're going to go. Oh, let's, let's keep on drinking the day owl into the night, because that's what you're going to do. This is absolutely delicious. Um, I know when, when we were looking at some rosés, bringing you some new uh, new ones out into the market, I said, you know, let's go back to the day owl because folks love that we did it in a can last time. It does have a Stelvin enclosure, screw cap. Uh, and since we're, you know, it's all about uh, screwing it tonight. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, yeah, folks, don't don't sleep on this one. Uh, again, $18. Uh, put it in your cart. Um Oh, and, and also just as a, as an aside, not to say this you know, if it, this means more to you or makes you want to buy an extra bottle or two, I guess I'll say it. Uh, with Mother's Day coming up, this is actually a female winemaker. So actually, and she's you know, and again, kind of one of these uh, you know, as as the spotlight is on, you, know, you see a lot of fantastic rising stars in the wine industry. A lot of them um, are female winemakers, especially from Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but in California, you have you know people like. Um, um, uh, Bibiana Gonzalez Ra for mm -hmm. Amade Catalia. You know, you have Maggie Harrison. I mean, you have all these names that, uh, you know, again, I know in certain circles are like rock stars, and to other people, you're like, who is that? But, you know, if for one, it, if, if, if one were to pick up wine publications, you know, people like Luis de Rosa for the Yolanda mm -hmm. Viognier, her name keeps coming up. She's also a winemaker for Pussy Vale. Mm -hmm. She's getting all this adoration. So I think now, you know, people are realizing, you know, like, hey, you know, it's, 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 you know, fair is fair. And hey, at the end of the day, I've always said women, you know, have a better palate. And when my wife was pregnant, I can tell you what, guys, a pregnant woman probably can smell anything across the room. So I'm like, you know, I know it's probably frowned upon pregnant women and drinking, but. If a winemaker is a woman and pregnant, she can probably make some of the best wine out there. You think that? So maybe they have more pregnant female like wine, the smell. Wine of, of course, smelling. Well, eighty five percent in the smell. I mean, right? And they can taste yeah. and spit out, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Might be the only that's thing. True. We're not going to knock them. We're not going to knock them if they want a little, little swing. Uh, we're gonna, uh, I guess we're going to go to the red blood next. Yeah. All right. So and speaking of female proprietors, and, and there and we go. We're there. staying. We're staying right there with mom and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and everything here on this next one, uh, folks. We 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 we've done the rosé from. We've done the white wine from. Yep. We have not done the red. Because we didn't have it at the time. Didn't it have just it. Just came in a few months ago. Um, Got we it. Now. Promised it came. It would come in, and I know we sold a little bit in the shop already. Yep. I think you're probably selling probably more of this or have mm -hmm. sold to some of the customers. Because you know with Cameron mm -hmm. Diaz and their Instagram. You know, I think, uh, I mean, you're always, hey, DC, do you have a sparkling wine? And I'm like, I haven't even heard about that. I wasn't oh, even yeah. offered about we that. Got you got folks people already it. about it. So. so here it is, the Aveline uh, Red Blend. Uh, so we're going to France for this one. And I'm super excited to try it. So, yeah, we, we haven't gotten to try it. I know some hand-sold some folks into the shop, and uh, but yet to actually try it ourselves. So this is going to be really, really fun. Uh, a real experiment. And I love the fact that, you know, it's a clear bottle. That's how that's how dark the fruit is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and another thing, too, uh, guys, that they're trying to say, I mean, they're like, hey, you know, we get it. You know, um, for every one customer, um, possibly like myself, that has, you know, certain producers that I know I'm going to buy now and maybe not drink for several, several years later. Um, this is something for, for the other 10 people behind me that go, you know what, Danny, uh, Andy, Tanya, I need a bottle of wine for tonight, tomorrow, the weekend. Uh, and again, you know, when you think about cutting costs, not only is the Stelvin a good way to cut costs, but, you know, your glass and your glass bottle. So, you know, when you think about Europe and when you're in Europe, if, for those of you that have been, it's not this kind of glamorous thing uh, that people think about. I mean, yes, it's very rich with wine, but mo more often you're basically filling up a jug at a local co-op of delicious wine, but it's in a jug. I mean, it's not like this, you know, let's put on a suit and tie and go to a wine dinner kind of thing. So this is very much indicative of a very European style wine. I just a no frills bottle, you know, then I can probably tell you a lot about what's in it. It's just a good, clean, natural wine, yep. and that's what they want to do. I mean, they want to make food-friendly, medium-bodied wine for people that, you know, 
if you want to go on the website, you can find about the varietals and location for people that let me really like about that. But again, to other people that don't do what's in the bottle and when organics and things like that, people are, are more conscious about that. She wanted to source in an area that she can find more organic wine, even though being a California girl, at least living in California yeah. now, Europe, more particularly Spain, she's actually sourcing a lot of her wine from Spain, but also France, as you mentioned. So get the cleanest organic wine she can find at the cost. So this is a little Syrah Grenache based blend. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, it is it is delicious. It oh, is right. yummy. Cameron Diaz does not make a bad wine. <laughs> yeah, she's she does not. And um, she again, actually drinks it. You know, the I mean, label is very friendly. It spells it out there. It's made with organic grapes, free from added sugar, artificial colors, no concentrates. It's vegan friendly, so that means they're not uh, egg particulate. It's fourteen point five percent alcohol. No sulfites uh, added. You know, no, what I mean, no. so it's uh, you know, it's and uh, it's very sweet. You know, very and delicious. the taste is pretty on. It says light to medium body, which is great. Yeah. Uh, hints of cherry and a little perfect part uh, touch of spice, which is there right yeah. at the end. Uh, and it says pair well with candlelight and a starry night. Oh, uh, so, yeah. well, for those of you that know me, if I were to read that, what he just said, he said Cameron Diaz, <laughs> automatically you're down three brownie points. I'm like, dude, really? But I got to say, I mean, from tasting the white and, and the rosé and, and this wine, um, you know, kudos to Cameron Diaz and really getting behind – you know, a team to say, this is what I want. I'm not a winemaker. I didn't study at UC Davis, but I know what I like. Craft me a really good wine because I have my name behind it. Um, this is what they came up with. And, and I got to say, when we were in the ethers of Zoom, when everything was on Zoom, um, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, uh, we were in like a three hour long Zoom thing. And uh, it was like we were going back and forth to different suppliers, different times. And like, don't forget about the Avaline uh, with the owners and, and proprietors at, you know, 12 o'clock. And so I was probably making deliveries out and about doing something. And it's probably 10 minutes into it. I'm like, oh crap. And I'm driving down the road. I'm at a stoplight and I hit the Zoom link. And I'm on the phone. And I'm not, you know, I'm paying attention to the road, but I, I have it on Bluetooth. And I hear this voice that's very familiar that I've heard before. And I'm like, that sounds like maybe camera. I don't know who it was. So I got another stoplight and I scroll over and sure enough, I'm like, is that Cameron Diaz? I mean, she was, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying she wasn't, I mean, she, how can I say this nicely? She wasn't like done up. I mean, she's a very beautiful woman. Don't get me wrong, but she, but I couldn't tell because like she, she was just here I am on a zoom call and it was probably three hours, you know, whatever, you know, and I'm like, I was like, who is the blonde? That sounds like Cam is that is that Cameron Diaz? Am I on a Zoom call with Cameron Diaz? And then it was like, I never had a question. Like, can I just start? Because it was like, you know, it was like thirty Cameron other Diaz? people. You know, I wish I like to think it was just me and Cameron. Like she was talking to me, uh, but I was just having like a starry night. Well, I was just thinking, I'm like, you know what? I mean, I'm on I'm on a Zoom call with Cameron Diaz. I mean, yeah. this is kind of I mean, this she's an A list celebrity, right? Yeah. I mean, she's yeah. very much a A lister, right? Yeah. So we're only two degrees away now. I, well, I, you think about it, you know. I mean, this isn't like I mean, like love the dude from Talk Suit, but it's not like that guy. I mean, we can get that guy if we want to. Right? We can probably get. The we guy. can't get Cameron Diaz. You know? no, <laughs> so, no, probably cannot. Like you know people, and we. I, I mean, know people, but. Yeah, I'm not Getting no, Cameron Diaz. Not getting Cameron Diaz. I, I was. I. We wow. get her wine though. You know. I, you know. She was probably sitting there going, "Man, is that TC Fraser?" She's probably. Doing I would the same love thing. him for an extra uh, if I knew. Yeah. Charlie's Angels. Uh, yeah. The next Charlie Angels. We need a. You know, like a wine. We need a. We need somebody that knows all about. Uh, we, need, we need a tall villain that needs an old wine. Yeah. Yeah. And Hawthorne and Barry. It's like I think he gave him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him a shot to the pulp. I can have like, like, I can have like a uh, like an English accent. I beat him to a shot of the pulp. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> man! I beat him to a shot of the pulp. We were a UFC fight. He was like a mm -hmm. UFC shot of the pulp, and it's like, <laughs> all right, guys, we're only drinking forty five dollar wine mm -hmm. and up, and and UFC. It's like <laughs> it's like a bottle with a gun rack. We cannot get more juxtaposed at this exactly. point. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Barb says she loves the Cameron wines. Yes, uh, the, the, the 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 rosé and the and the white. It, it, it does. It has some body. It's again. It's 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 light to medium body, but it it drinks yeah, it, it drinks heavy. Yeah. Well, I, I you know these are two of my favorite varietals. You know, Grenache probably pounds pounds one of my favorite in the world because I just think it just. 
I mean, what can I say? I mean, it's got everything from that peppery to like a little kind of smoked meat sometimes uh, to this kind of plummy thing. And Syrah mm-hmm. just gives it the backbone. And, you know, those two varietals together, you know, you know me, I love Rhone Valley wines. Uh, but, you know, when you say Grenache and Syrah, I'm, I'm pretty much already there for at least a glass or whatever you got. Uh, but when you, you know, and again, when, when you think about it, one thing Cameron did say on the Zoom call that I remembered uh, after I kind of Fame composed boy, myself, <laughs> you know, composed myself, <laughs> I was like, can you stop, stop my copy of The Mask? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people forget she was in The Mask. Um, uh, is, uh, is she was saying, okay, well, unlike other celebrity wines, and it wasn't like she was trying to throw other celebrity wines in the bus, she was just trying to say, because of, where we're sourcing from we're trying to make them as for as affordable as we can but you know having the quality control the integrity basically where we want to be we can't make a 9.99 retail wine like we just can't do it i mean she goes there's others out there that will put their name on it we couldn't do it but she goes we found sources to get basically the best everyday price point and she said unfortunately she goes eventually she would love to find places in california oregon washington as of right now, for their for what they're trying to do and the price, they can't find it. But they have a plethora of it in Spain. And for those of you that went to the Spanish dinner, a little factoid that I dropped on you. One thing I didn't realize till about a year ago was that Spain, and it almost makes sense because they have more vines than anyone else, but they have per capita more Oregon, or Oregon more organic vineyards, whatever that means to, to you, um, than anywhere else in the world. So when you think about just buying organic, and if it doesn't even say it on the bottle, by Spain, by South of France, South, Southern Italy, generally speaking. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I mean, just it's clean without having to, to go through the regulated. Here's money to certify and put a stamp on my wine. You yeah, know? That extra, it skips that extra step. Exactly, that extra step. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we yeah. Well, we normally have uh, this uh, screw cap. Uh, Avaline uh, right on the shelf at $25 uh, tonight, 23 plus your club discounts. Uh, don't forget to use those in the coupon code if you're in the seller club type seller state, state and Grand Reserve and Reserve uh, to get your discount. Just type reserve in that, uh, in that checkout and you'll get your discount. Absolutely Speaking of Cameron, delicious. I watch a lot of, um, or I follow a lot of celebrities on Instagram and I love when she, and she'll just do it periodically because they'll just, like video it she'll just randomly send people her wine like in the mail and they get mm-hmm. so excited they're like oh my god thank you <laughs> she's probably watching the show right now going yeah that tc yeah. if you guys know someone i mean if you guys know someone that does the taxes for the guy that does the taxes for the guy that knows the person for Cameron Diaz. there's someone out there that knows i mean there's yeah. somebody that knows someone right i mean that's, that's yes. one thing we've known right oh. so uh but anyway cameron uh, love you. Love to get you in the shop. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever we got to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll probably email saying, TC, thank you for your interest. If you buy 4,000 cases of wine yeah. in a month, yeah. she would consider, uh, you know. Uh, probably going to get a message because we were trying to get the bubbles. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the bubbles. So, uh, yeah, I guess we need to buy. Guys, you know, if, for those of you that are pesking these guys for, for the bubbles, we need, to, we need to sell more of the red. We need yeah. to get the bubbles. Yeah. This, get is, this is a fantastic red. I got to say, and, and before we move on to this next one, I know for some of you out there, you know, when he said 25, 21, I mean, I get it. We're all on a wine budget. That's kind of getting north to some people's wine budget. I put this, if you go on the loaded rate and you probably go, all right, 25 bucks is my spendy bottle tonight. And I got my two or three bottles that Danny and Andy and Tanya turned me on to. I put that against it. I put yeah. that because yeah. again, when people see a very plain label, let I me mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's a very basic label. That's what she wanted. Um, and a screw cap, they think, oh, it's just a red wine by a celebrity, and it's red, yeah. and it's probably not that good. I gotta tell you guys, take the Pepsi challenge with that wine. Put yeah. that against any of your other. Hell, I've got up to thirty-five bucks in the shop with some of those yeah, wines. I'm so with glad that right I got there. to finally try yeah. it because mm-hmm. now I can definitely promote it because I, I was always like, I haven't tried this one, but I love <laughs> yeah, the rosé right. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, I love the rosé, but I. Got I say the white was pretty the white good too. Right. So tasty. Yeah, yeah. So all camera, we'll have you in the shot. We do yeah, everything. We'll do it. We'll do it. All right. Now let's move on uh, to our last wine of the night. We're, we're going to keep the show nice and quick for you tonight. Um, because the weather outside is beautiful, and we want you to be able to enjoy it, uh, and maybe take that bottle of wine that you got last week or previous uh, weeks, and, and sit out on the patio with it. Uh, but next is going to be one that you're going to probably know or remember, uh, but 
Never done in virtual vines. This is the Ring Bolt uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the 2019. We have the 2018 or 2016 in the wine club. So if that tells you how long ago yep. we did, um, but a fun Australian Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, this is this is a a crowd favorite. I remember when it was in the club. It was a crowd, a crowd, a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. um, look at that beautiful color. Oh you guys my are gosh, seeing. It's so dark. Yeah, it I is beautiful. It. It's per and the violet. violet. It's violet. Violet. Don't, violet. Don't, don't you know? I don't. I don't really remember. I remember this one, but I don't. Has it always been a self and enclosure for this one? Yes, yes, it has. Okay. Well, and when we were thinking about where to go for a red, because we knew, um, you know, that that the Aveline being new uh, and the success off the other ones, we're like, okay, let's do that one. I remember, you know, uh, from tasting it once or two other times, it was lighter to medium body. So I was like, well, Danny, we gotta think of something a little bit bigger, right? We gotta think of something a little bit bolder. Mm. And immediately I thought about Australia because a little factoid for those of you uh, out there that uh, like such things, the Oceania Islands, and I'm talking about New Zealand and Australia, um, they're really the ones that started the Stelvin cap enclosure. 90% of the stuff that comes out of New Zealand and about 75 or 70% 70 out of Australia. And I'm talking about red and white wine. So for those of you out there that uh, are wondering how wine ages under a screw cap, uh, whenever I get to go to these comparative tastings and we're trying wines that's 10, 15, 20 years old that has a screw cap, the technology wasn't there. Or people weren't using it, frankly, in the late 90s, early 2000s in California. So often the wines that we're drinking that are from the 80s and 90s that are anything red or white are from Australia because they got it. First of all, they're an island out in the middle of nowhere, so it's very expensive to import cork. But they often thought, and they, and they realized very early on because Australia was one of the first New World countries to adapt new world wine making techniques they're like well we don't have this tradition to make wine in certain ways and certain barrels let's do what works we're very much into technology they're like wine geeks out there they're like well, in terms of technology right they're like the germans when it comes to techno you know they're like <laughs> what's 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 the new thing you know and uh and and, and so stelvin was very much a new thing and you know how to dance you know, we know how to dance the coincidence right so yeah so this, this was very much so and so and so in australia when we talk about shiraz or we think about white wine either Viognier or Simeon, they were the first ones to go, okay, what is the thing that F's up wine the most? It's the TCAs, which are, the, are not only the cork taint, but things that happen in the winery. Okay, well, let's clean up the winery. Let's get all the Bertrandomyces out. Let's get all these kind of wild yeast cells, which, hey, if you're a brewery like Wicked Weed and you use sour beer, Great. But you if you're a winery, have... but if you're a winery, Danny can tell you because he grew up in a winery. That that's why they spray everything mm -hmm. three and four times. And if you're a kid, it's fun at first, but after a while, you're like, "Can I stop spraying mm -hmm. stuff?" You're just like, "Please, it's... you got to spray it and spray it and spray." Because you don't want in... any. You got to have. I mean, it's clean. You got the floors in the winery. I lived. Often. I lived in. I, you would have thought I was going fishing, but I wasn't. It was just because I had to hose down everything. And yeah. if not, you'd just be drenched. Yeah. So. I mean, so you got to clean it out. So the point being is. Is they go okay? I don't want to make a fantastic wine. Get to get to a consumer, put a cork in it, and either one they didn't store it correctly, or two that cork, no matter how good it is, we're we're at about a five to ten percent failure rate when it comes to cork. So if people, if they don't recognize it's corked and goes and asks the som or the restaurant owner for another bottle, they just go. Okay, don't order that ever again, right? And I got to tell you guys, when we do old comparative tastings. The corks inevitably will have a bottle or two that's dead or tired, but the, the screw caps, it's the opposite. It's reductive. So I've had a few Australia winemakers bring out, let's say about three years ago, we were drinking, um, we had, a, I think it was a 2008, 2010 pre-sale. So it wasn't like super old, but it was old enough. And the first few customers, it, it wasn't leaping off the glass. And he was smelling it. He smelled it. And he just thought he was, you know, maybe you know, early in the day. After about the third account, kind of he could tell wasn't like just getting excited. He took the bottle like a martini, just shook it, right? Just like just to wake it up because it's this reductive thing. Instead of a cork, which lets slow oxidation over time, this lets none. So it's like, Tiny. like that, yeah, like that. And it's just, and when you open, it's still kind of like, can I come out? I don't know if I can come out, you know? And so you need that like air and that kind of just, you know, jostling around. So anyway, having said all that, Australia leads the way, and for those of you that not only want to drink your wine now, which I assume most of you will, but if you do want to put a bottle that, i got to tell you, Danny hasn't done the price, but a bottle that will not cost your arm and a leg, this one will age easily a decade. 
I know a screw cap will go, a screw cap? Yes, you do age a screw cap. And I can tell you, take another bottle equally priced with a cork, put them side by side, do the challenge. Go ahead and put a note, don't drink for 10 years. And I got to tell you, the one with the screw cap will come out probably better than others. Yeah. But one reason we want to do this wine tonight, guys, Australia not only leads the way with screw caps for their reds, but it's from an up and coming area called Margaret River. This is on the western side of Australia. So when you think of Australia like Sydney and Melbourne, Adelaide, that's on that southeastern corner. Uh, we're talking about Barossa Valley and the Claren Bell. Uh, once, but not for wine. Okay. Not for wine. Many, many moons ago. Okay. I think it was it was a boxing match against yeah. a kangaroo. <laughs> yeah. We will get into that yeah. later. Yeah. I was I was out I was out surfing and they called sharks the men in gray suits and they're like oh, there's a men in gray suit over there. You gotta watch out for that. So Charles, that, hopefully that, that answers. About. Charles, I hope that answers your uh, the yes, question uh, on the uh, on the long or longer with a quart bottle. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, was there a question? You can go a little bit. You're, gonna, you're probably gonna go a, a little bit longer oh, okay. with a quart bottle, um, especially if you start talking about uh, Brunellos and Barolos and Chateau de Pops. You're probably you could probably look at well, yeah, and, and it's tradition with those. I mean, because again, I mean, you know, the quality. But again, even with cork, no matter how great the producer is. You know the 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 average is still about five to ten percent cork taint. So again, um, you know, just by default, yeah. sometimes uh, you know that's why some people that really love a wine, you know, sometimes you got to make the investment three, five, six bottles or a case, and depending case, on the price. Because and you know how many times have you guys brought six bottles home? You love that the tasting. The next two bottles, or maybe the next bottle, or you're just like, eh, and then like three years later, you're like, damn, how, I should have bought more. You know, and so, and again, it's not only situational. Wine evolves. Wine comes about. This is 2019. We're probably, in essence, drinking this wine maybe a little young, yeah. but hey, let's face it. We're in the wine business. We drink young wine. I mean, we drink wine when it's released. And even though it's 19, they're, you know, they're harvesting wine six months ahead of us because they're on the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but what I love about this area, un unlike Cabernets from, from Southeastern Australia, being from McLaren Vale, you have this totally different, um, influenced by the bay it's actually called ringbolt because it's called ringbolt bay named after an anglican ship that was uh, sunk uh it's where the indian and south ocean meet and which is very torrential waters i mean it's very i mean there's legends uh written about it i mean it's kind of like if you can go around without going to the south and the indian ocean that kind of area because there's so many ships that have been shipwrecked there um that you that you kind of avoid it so ringbolt was the name of the ship and, and aptly named of the bay and one of the first wineries out there, Vasi Felix, which we also did in, in a wine club, was the first to plant there, but that was 1976. So again, guys, all things considered, 1976, no matter how you slice it, it wasn't that long ago, especially when it comes to wine. So it's very much an up and coming area. But the difference being is I think Cabernet from like Barossa Valley, you get more of this like milk chocolate kind of like silky, smoother kind of a thing. Whereas I think McLaren Valley, you get more of this darker 70 75 percent bitter cacao you know intertwined with like a little bit of this like red pepper maybe a little bit of like a maybe just like a touch of like thyme or something like that like a dried herb the pepper, on them. It, I mean, it's, it the pepper so it's just it's a kaleidoscope yeah. of steak au pois let me go ahead and say it like and you know ribeye filet sirloin with an au pois sauce with this right here and some root vegetables, maybe some carrots, roasted carrots, and some potatoes, fingerling potatoes. Done. <laughs> Done. Carrots are always in my meal. Done. Oh my god, it's a must. Let's let's well, show everybody the pricing on this. Get them nice and caramelized. I mean, anybody likes a carrot. <laughs> so uh, when it was in the club, we had a twenty-two. Uh, tonight we have it down to twenty. So you're going to save that plus your club discount. So that means for some of you folks, uh, you're you're going to get it sub twenty. And, and another and another female winemaker. So you know it wasn't planned that way going into Mother's Day, but we we managed to. We managed to get there anyway. Um, or it could be like the CEO of Coke, you know, when they were losing market share in the 80s of Pepsi. They changed the formula and people got uproar and they changed it back and they, they got market share again. Yeah. So they asked the CEO at the time, they said, was that planned? And he says, well, we're not that smart, but we're not that stupid. So <laughs> I'm going to go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And that, well, we just you know, great wines, guys. You know, That's what Pepsi and, came out with, Pepsi Clear. They're like, well, if, they, if Coke can just screw up the formula, we'll, we'll make it clear. We'll see what happens. Uh, this, is, this, guys, this is an excellent, excellent Cabernet. I'd even say um, I'm interested to taste it tomorrow because mm -hmm. it, it, it is it, – it, 
as you saw, we opened it right here on this it's show. Good. It's really good, but it is it is it it's is like, big. Well, it well, is big. Yeah, well, it's like and it, and it reminds me very much so. And, and however one could articulate this, but when you smell it, you can smell that it comes from this kind of dry, arid climate. And when I and for those of you that know Napa. Think of like northern Calistoga because Calistoga and northern yeah. Napa is always much warmer. So you get more of this red fruit, more of these like red hot kind of a thing, um, you know, more of a dried leathery kind of a thing versus like southern Napa, which is more jam and blueberry and, you know, more of a lush fruit. So, you know, to me, uh, this is more reminiscent of, of, you know, a la Chateau de Montalena than anything else. I mean, this is a, this is a beautiful cab. How much, how much but, is this? Yeah, I mean, for twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh my gosh! Even I was just thinking, <laughs> just staring at the bottle. It it just looks so pricey, anyways. Like. No. And the taste. You guys bring this to a party, I swear. I mean, bring this to a party. Let someone bring, open up a forty-five dollar bottle of Napa yeah. Cab, and let yeah. this take its money all day long. Yeah, it will. It will. It is that good? Yeah. And at the price, uh, it's going to knock them out of the park. This is the the Ring Bolt that we're talking about. We had in the wine club uh, when we did it was the twenty sixteen. This is the twenty nineteen. So very much a, a new vintage um, and uh, drinking great. But I I would. You know, this is the one. If you want to test it, set this down for a couple of years. I guarantee yeah. you're going to see how Stelvin enclosures uh, really hold up. Um, it's what they're it's what they're designed to do now. Um, we actually talked um, two weeks ago. Uh, we had uh, a copper cane on. Mm -hmm. They actually use a special type of mm -hmm. Stelvin enclosure. It's called a whack enclosure mm -hmm. um to add that extra freshness mm -hmm. so california's catching up mm -hmm. they're, they're they're developing yeah. new new technology yeah. in the, the screw yeah. cap uh we we know that um cane uh, or cane mm -hmm. um uses, yeah plump jack was the very first one in, yep. in, in that well they were the first ones to do a a hundred dollar or more cabernet from napa valley and they sold them in two pack cases they literally yep. got people to buy them one bottle that was a cork and one bottle that was the stolen enclosure and basically said no, you be the judge. And and frankly, anyone that was being a discerning judge would say there was no difference. And, and in some cases that the Stelvin won, but often it's, you know, I mean, I get it. I'm a romantic. I'm a, I'm a retro. I'm a, I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. I love a cork and pulling a cork as much as the next guy. But at the end of the day, it's about the juice and how good the juice is and saving the juice. So and if that's what it's about, guys, and frankly, at the end of the day, and what wineries won't tell you this I, I mean, even a good Stelvin is going to cost you 15, 20, 30 cent. A good cork's about a dollar, two dollars. So if you're making 20,000 cases of wine, that's $20,000 before you've done anything. Yep. You know, I mean, so the joy of owning a winery, unlike owning a home sometimes where you could fix it for a couple hundred bucks, maybe, you know, a winery, anytime I'm like, hey, Danny, you need a check for how much? Five, 10, 15. You're like, how? When do the checks for three hundred? When do those checks happen? Yeah, like, nope. It's it's a check for ten or more every time. Every you know? time. <laughs> every time. It's always going to be crazy. Yeah. So this is one way they can give you the good juice without having to do it. So oh, look at that. Look at that. We already got that. Like Rob Rule well, already in here. Shoot. I mean, it's the bell. I think oh, often right people there. kind of go, but TC, are you guys crazy? Why are you trying to hard sell me, Glenn Gary, Glenn lost me, buy me? I mean, <laughs> guys, I'm telling. Because I'm trying to tell you, you're going to bring a bottle home. You're going to drink it, and and I get it. You're going to be, you're going to wait for the next virtual vines, but this is something I'm telling you right now. For twenty dollars a bottle, make the investment, get a few bottles, have a few in the I'm going to drink anytime stash, and a few that I forgot about. I'm going to drink whenever you know I get their stash when I move again stash mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm telling you, you'll be so rewarded. And when you write on the back how much you paid for the bottle. Uh, and you open it in 2030, and this wine's probably is forty dollars by then. I don't know. Yeah, uh, you're gonna be like, man, remember when Ring Bolt was twenty dollars on virtual vines, and we, we knew about it before anybody crushed else. it. Crushed before it got ninety six points, and it was the number three wine of the year. I, and I know, I know, Rob's been a big fan of, of, of Ring Bolt for a while, so I can imagine in, in his stash, and he's got some 2016. Probably, probably has some old, older ones uh, in that cellar as well, Rob. And uh, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to. Uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he's gonna love to do a little. Uh, back to back line tasting of, yep. of these at some point, uh, and, vertical. And honestly, I gotta say, uh, just and this is just off the cuff here, but um, you know, just reminded that the quality of, of the of what's going on in Australia. Maybe we revisit Australia and do another yep. and, and in the not so distant future, do an Australia yep. focused. We can definitely uh, do that because we, we do love we do love the Australian wines. It's what it seems like they, the past few times like with Bossy Felix and Pusey Vale mm -hmm. and some of these other wines. Every time we present, Samuel, people, people we, love we did, them. yeah, we did, we did, we did do it. Out back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, get it. I get it out back. Out back. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there, hey, there we go. We'll go we'll out back. Onion, we'll, onion. Onion. we'll do a little. Hey, well. Blooming onion. We'll have a steak with it. A blimey. Oh, <laughs> well, that's going to be our show tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's do a quick little run through of everything we had on the show. First up, we had the. Uh, there it is. There was what I was looking for. The pig pool, which I got to say, guys, if you if you're if you normally you're like I want to go by the shop and drink this. I, I, there's some thirsty folks in this room right now, yeah. and I know I know Danny. I know I know Andy with Pig Pool. Whatever's left, and this might just be you know like Andy, you're like Andy. Where'd that bottle go? And you're like, what bottle? The Pig Pool. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the Pig Pool. There's a Pig Pool. Know, there's a Pig Pool. Like that song. It wasn't me. You're like, dude, I, I just let it wasn't me. You're like, I knew it there. there. <laughs> like I knew it was there. So guys, jump on this wine. I know we just got a pallet in. It will not. It will go fast. There, there are customers around the state that hey. It's like they say, you don't know, you better ask somebody. They know. Danny and these guys know. I know they're going to have some for the top, but make sure you're jumping on this it's, sooner rather than later. It's going to go fast. I can tell you that. Uh, down to $12 tonight. What a great deal that is. Uh, all Damn, $12. $12. Oh plus your club just – plus your 12 Yeah, oh I know. Oh, my gosh. It'll be like $10. Uh, it's, for some, it could be Stop less than it. that. Yes. Wait, cut it out. In that cut it out. Cut yes, full house. Uh, next <laughs> up, we did the Day Owl Rosé. Yeah, mostly Grenache out of California. Absolutely delicious. This is one, you know, Sunday's Mother's Day. Open this up with mom. She's going to be a very, very happy camper. Actually, I should also say, I need to update it, but um, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be posting uh, some information on some bubbles. So you can, you, you know, bubble mom up this Mother's Day oh, is going to be the theme. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. I'll have some bubbles for mothers as well. There you go. As well. Yeah. And then we went to the uh, Aveline. This is the Cameron Diaz line of wines. We love the rosé. We love the white wine. This night, tonight we did the red blend. And it did not disappoint. If anything, it, it totally over-delivered for the price. Which is saying something since it was twenty five to twenty three. It definitely drinks more on um, the uh, more expensive line of, of things. Everything tonight, I really wouldn't kick anything out of bed, as they say. <laughs> but if you really had to twist my arm, and I know at one point when we started doing virtual vines, people would ask, "What's the crowd? What's the crowd pleaser, guys? If I'm going to buy one wine tonight, like what's the wine that everybody that comes over is going to like?" And it's hard not to say the pig pool and everything, but guys, if you really had to twist my arm, this wine, I really got to say, it's beautiful, it's medium bodied, and with the weather warming up, I you could throw this in the fridge five, ten minutes and get a little oh, chill yeah. on it, totally, yeah. totally yeah. appropriate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally appropriate, so. totally delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, you know what? I'm not gonna stop drinking our reds because it's warm out. No. I, but that's what we call it. It's not, a, it's, not a, <laughs> it's not an overly heavy red. It is very easy drinking, and uh, you know maybe you know hey, once you the sun umbrella, goes down. Yeah, well, hey, you got a Yeti cooler, throw this in there. You got an umbrella. I know yep. when you're outside. I mean, as long as you're in the shade, you got a little cool I wind. I've been getting a lot of wind lately. Maybe it'll be a windy summer like that. Who knows? Nice. Who we'll knows? Take it. Take and then we just we'll finished up with the Ring Bolt Cabernet Sauvignon. This uh, this is. This folks needs a uh, needs a steak and it needs to be on the grill tomorrow. <laughs> um, that's what it needs. You need to have this for when you're grilling out, uh, throwing that red meat on the grill, maybe making kebabs or any of those fun things. Absolutely delicious. Listen, I, this has been tried and true and tested already. We know we put it in the wine club. We know how well it did in the wine club. Uh, this is just a hey yeah, new nice. vintage. Take a crack at it because this is absolutely delicious. Um, a little bit bigger, but yet. All the body, all the flavor, all the everything you want in a Cabernet, not and it alcoholic. doesn't stay Napa, which yeah. is amazing. Not overly yeah. alcoholic. I mean, it only spent about eight months in, in barrel, uh, not all of which are new. I mean, again, so guys, this is a wine that is made to. It's just, it's just a, it's just a damn good Cabernet. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I, you know, as Cabernets go, the one thing I love about Cabernet, it has this lineage. No matter where you drink it at, I mean, certainly there there are differences of California Cab versus all Argentina, but this has that beautiful graphite, that minerality. It's got a little of that dark fruit, but I would say it leans more of that dried fruit. As Van said, it's it's a kaleidoscope of peppers, you know, oh, all kinds of peppercorns. Oh, so if you are a peppercorn fan, I mean, I put too much pepper in my food. I, I love too. pepper. I if you're a pepper freak like I am, you will love 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 this wine right here. It's really, really good. Remember to use your coupon code if you're in the wine club, seller, estate, reserve if you're in the Grand Reserve and Reserve Club. Uh, any of the war- wines ordered tonight will be available for pickup on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Don't worry, Rob. We got you down for four ring bolts. They will be in the shop on Wednesday at 4 o'clock for you to pick up. Uh, 
So again, uh, some of these wines will be open and available to taste in the shop tomorrow. I guarantee you that if you do come in, in on Wednesday and want to taste, these will probably make it. <laughs> Guarantee that folks are going to be loving on these. Models. No Corvin needed. I mean, I mean, this, the one thing the Stelvin tells you yep. is, I mean, you know, you, it, it just, uh, you know, yeah, none of these, you, well, not only none of those, but you're just, you're just like, well, I lost the cork, I lost the cap, might as well go ahead and finish it, right? So. <laughs> Well, there's your show for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, and, and, and joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, where we're going to have another fun lineup. We're going to work on the theme today. And this way, tomorrow, I'll tell everybody what that theme is going to be. I think it's uh, time for you to do a giveaway again. Well, and, oh, I'll, yeah. and I'll go ahead and say this, too, and, and, and make sure you remind the good folks tomorrow, whomever uh, tonight orders the most, let's just go ahead and say a minimum of six bottles, whomever orders the most tonight, and I was going to bring it over, I have a screw cap bottle at home uh, that I will reward that person with. Oh, all person right, with. so I guess we'll have a winner we'll have a winner on that. So and I know we've bottles. had some people tuned off uh, already because, you know, we're winding up, but uh, I failed to mention that. Thank you, Ben, for, for jogging my memory. I was going to bring it over. I, I was... Kids, blame it on the kids. Uh, blame it like, on the yeah, kids. Yeah, like Millie Vanilli, right? There's a, you know, it's like, you know. Uh, anyway, I couldn't get the pasta done quick enough tonight. So long story short, I have a bottle for whomever uh, buys the most tonight. Let's and say minimum of six bottles. I'm sure we, and we have somebody out there that's going to meet oh. that. Rob, you said four bottles. You get two more. You're already in, in the Already group. in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Let's just go ahead and say, but you get two people that are down for it. I'll go ahead and. Do that bottle, and I'll oh, and I'll wow. rise. Oh wow! So no, if we got a tie, yeah. got a tie. Yeah, if we got ties, he's going to do there's it. No, there's no tie goes to the runner. No tie goes. You're both winners. Both winners. All right. So the so the uh, the purchasing is on for tomorrow, and and yes, purchasing for tomorrow will count. So uh, anybody watching this late uh, tomorrow will count towards that. So uh, don't miss out. Look forward to seeing you in the shop, and uh, have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we and again look forward to seeing. you. Special events coming up. Don't forget um, Thursday night that uh, Paris Valley Road uh, Paso wine tasting. Still got uh, 14 spots left. That's it, 14. So I don't expect that to last uh, past tomorrow. Um, knowing, knowing how some folks haven't signed up yet, and I know some people tomorrow that will be in the shop will probably uh, sign up. So we look forward to seeing you in the shop uh, this week. And, um, and again. You want hey, to sign hey, us for, off? For, for, for the lovely Van of Vines, for Mr. Danny. Guys, keep on tasting. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.